Hello, 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 and welcome back to Hunter Tuned. Uh, welcome back to another sunny day in Wisconsin here. Um, we are at the shop and uh, had to do a few things this morning already and last night. Our air compressor actually went out, so I actually got some of the cars pulled outside right now. And uh, we got the old air compressor here. This is the compressor that we were running and uh, the belt shredded on it. So um, yeah, I was gonna get a replacement belt for this compressor, but uh, it looks like I have to remove the connecting rod here for the, the motor. You can see the piston right in here, and then this is the rod that you know goes on this part, the crankshaft. And uh, to get the belt on, you have to remove the connecting rod and the piston. So I'd have to pull the head. I mean, it wouldn't be much work, but I don't really wanna mess with it. Um, and yeah, so I was gonna try to get a belt, but I didn't, so. Um, I put a post out on my Facebook page and I just said, hey, does anybody have an air compressor for sale? Because this one has pissed me off one too many times because if you guys know, I did get this for free. It has been sitting in my attic for a long time, so I brought it out to the shop. And uh, mm -hmm. I had to weld on a new uh, feed pipe here off the motor to the tank so the it would feed the tank because I had blown off the line and then we replaced the line and then it blew that one and then the motor mounts fucking broke on this thing so the because it vibrates and it's so loud. Um, it just vibrates so damn much this motor mount broke and then this feed pipe broke and this feed pipe still leaks So uh, yeah, and then the belt blew and I'm like I'm done with that fucking thing <laughs> I'm done with it So the only thing I really wanted to keep this one is because it's a 26 gallon tank It's actually kind of big and uh, it goes up to 150 psi on this regulator So that's the one reason I did want to keep this one around But like I said, I did put a post out on my Facebook page and uh, one of my buddies Colton actually reached out to me uh, he's the one that actually sold me the Fairmont, if you guys uh, remember the Fairmont. Um, he reached out to me and he actually gave me this air compressor. So this is like an old Ingersoll Ram uh, air compressor or Craftsman or something like that. And this one has big motor. Um, it, it's actually a fairly big motor, but it's a very small tank. So um, this is a yeah Ingersoll Rand uh, motor. It's got a, uh, it's oiled, so that's a really good sign. Um, it's got a dipstick and shit on it. So um, this air compressor is awesome. It's super quiet. Um, I would turn it on, but it's already full right now. Uh, this air compressor is very quiet and it actually builds up a lot faster than that red fucking Husky. So um, what I wanna do, cause this compressor, the motor and everything is good, but the, the regulator only allows the tank to build 80 PSI. I don't know if there's a limitation in the motor or if it's just in the regulator to where I can get this thing to cram out 150 or if I can maybe just take the regulator off of this one and put it onto that tank. Um, I think that would be really cool and I would really like to somehow integrate this compressor and that compressor together so, because that motor is pretty big, it can fill up you know that tank in like three or four minutes. So that's pretty quick compared to this thing it was on for at least you know five minutes. But. Uh, I would like to maybe integrate this tank and that tank together so we can have a total of 46 gallons of capacity um, and just have that compressor fill both tanks. I just don't know how I'm gonna go about it. Um, and I don't really know what to do if I can swap this regulator on or what the deal is because 80 PSI, you know, it works um, for what we really need, but um, it'd be cool to have that 150 PSI um, max and have the 46 gallon capacity for virtually free because we got that compressor for free. He gave it to me, that's super awesome. And that air compressor, the tank is really big. So I mean, I'm sure we can kinda, you know, work our magic here and try to make something out of nothing. Um, I think that'd be really cool. I mean, I mean, that's kinda what this channel's all about. We just bought a dyno for $750 and we put it in the ground, retrofitted it, got a TV. We have a fully working dyno all converted over to electronics reads out horsepower and torque now all for under like three grand so, and that's with buying the dyno getting it transported cutting a hole in the floor buying the tv buying the software buying everything um if you guys want a price breakdown of that stuff i i probably will do it in one of the next videos maybe i'll make a dedicated video on how i did how i got a chassis dyno for you know this much money and how i got it working and everything like that we did have another issue with the dyno um if you guys know in the last couple videos, the dyno has been uh, leaking out of the vent tube because when this thing gets hot or it, you know, we run it for a long time, it does get a little warm and it starts to vent uh, coolant out of the brake. And it had just like a little, uh, it had this little nipple on the end of it. So this nipple was sitting on here and it was just sitting open and it would drip out of this thing. 
and it would literally just drip, 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 drip constantly. And we had this little uh, Tupperware container catching the water and then we'd have to empty it like every couple minutes uh, because it would just keep dripping out of there. So what I did for the time being is I just got a barb fitting and some uh, vinyl tubing here and I ran the vinyl tubing off of the barb fitting and I ran it all the way back into the tank. So when it does leak um, or, you know, build up too much pressure, whatever, it just goes right back into the tank so we don't flood the pit because I don't want water getting into any of the electronics that are down here or God forbid it floods the whole damn thing when I'm not here for some reason. So just trying to eliminate any water leaks. If there is any water leaks, I'm trying to get it back into the tank so it uh, doesn't flood the, the dyno pit here. Um, and I do think there might be a, a really small drip uh, once in a while off of the front seal here. Um, I may have to, I might take the brake apart and kind of redo it all and run um, bigger feed lines and return lines off of the water brake because it is a little bit slow to, um, you know, engage the load. It's not that big of a deal, but it is a little bit of annoying uh, when I'm trying to tune if I have to sit there for a couple seconds to uh, load the car. Um, I know Darren Lobb on his YouTube channel, he upgraded the the lines going in and out of the brake and he says it helps tremendously with how fast you can load the dyno. Uh, just because like, you know, when we have turbo cars and stuff in there, if we want less load down low when the car doesn't make as much power and then it comes into the boost, you want to hit a button and have it cram the load at it so it doesn't just blow through the freaking, you know, it doesn't just blow through the brake. Um, and I've had quite a few people reach out to me and are like, you know, how much for tuning and how much for dyno time and stuff like that. And I don't really know what I'm going to charge yet for like you know if somebody wants to come do a couple pulls or if somebody wants me to do some uh, tuning on their car uh, i have been charging 250 bucks for street tuning for the last fucking five years um and i don't really plan on having my prices go up at all because i have a dyno i just think it'd be it'd bring more business to me in the meantime uh so i mean it'd probably be somewhere around there but like i said i had a lot of people reach out to me and were wondering like hey how much for tuning how much for dyno time etc etc um, I'm not really 100% sure yet uh, because I want to, I mean the dyno is ready to go for like anybody that wants to come in and do this but I'm not like trying to overwhelm myself with business right now and then like you know if I run the dyno constantly and then something goes wrong I don't want to like have to cancel on somebody so I, I am taking business in right now but I'm not like looking for it if you know what I mean. Hopefully that makes sense. It is just, uh, I can't even explain how nice it is outside. I love days when it's just still. Like, there is no wind today. It's a calm day and uh, very relaxing out here. Beautiful day. So, anyways, I am actually putting together my B20 VTEC for the CRX. I actually started to assemble this thing already. I know I have went over a lot of uh, bottom end rebuild videos and they do get a lot of uh, views. I think one of my most viewed videos on the channel is uh, rebuilding a GSR uh, bottom end. But uh, anyway, so I am putting together a B20 bottom end right now for my CRX because I'm going to do a B20 VTEC. Uh, engine swap into this car and hopefully make around 200 horsepower uh, naturally aspirated that is my goal and then maybe spray some nitrous on top for going racing um, but anyway so i am putting this thing together i got this from a junkyard uh, my homie carlos works up at a junkyard and he got me this motor uh, quite a while ago and i uh, haven't really done anything with it because i was going to do another b20 in my hatch but um, I'm, I'm done with boosting 25 pounds of boost on these blocks because the, the, the sleeves just really can't take it. They're just too damn thin and they crack in between the cylinders really easy. So I said the hell with it. We'll do an all motor build because the last year, if you guys watched, uh, you know, like some of the videos on my channel, like the uh, hundred mile per hour on glare ice video, uh, that CRX had a B20 VTEC and it was just naturally aspirated. We put a supercharger on it for the hell of it and uh, it was honestly way more fun naturally aspirated because the thing would just burn through second gear. Um, you know, it just it was just a lot of fun, sounded good, makes good torque, etc. So I did spend quite a bit of time cleaning this engine off. Uh, it was from the junkyard obviously, so we had it hot tanked and then I had uh, just kind of cleaned up the surface here a little bit with just a wire wheel, or not a wire wheel. <laughs> I just kind of cleaned it off a brake cleaner and a rag and then I honed the cylinders and now that the cylinders are honed I had it flipped over and I sprayed out all the passages, I sprayed out all the bolt holes with compressed air, make sure any gunk or junk wasn't in any of the threads because that's a lot of times all Hondas, you know, you'll strip out a head bolt or you strip out a main bolt or something like that because, um, you know, shit gets built up in the threads and then when you try to run a bolt in it, it 
takes the threads out of the block and then you're, you're done. So anyways, um, I sprayed out all the orifices, all the oil passages, I sprayed out uh, very well. And uh, this thing actually turned out really good. It's really clean on the bottom side now. And then I have a couple of these LS crankshafts, which LS and B20 cranks are the same. So um, I just put a LS crank that I had laying around into this block. These caps are from this block, obviously. You never wanna mix up the caps. Um, but uh, yeah, so I got the caps installed and the crank installed with my new engine bearings. I went with the King Racing high performance engine bearings here. These are, um, I don't know what part number these are. Uh, there you go. So these are the B series, K series. They're all the same main bearing uh, on Hondas usually. So uh, anyways, I got all the mains installed and the crank in with the thrust washers. And uh, this thing spins over really nice. Uh, if you can't spin it by hand, usually you're too tight. Um, I, I have measured a lot of these clearances in the past. I'm not really measuring this one just because it's all motor. It's not really like, uh, it's not as big of a deal if you're running, um, you know, just all motor or whatever. But if you're running like big horsepower, like I'm gonna with the hatch, we're gonna go through like a more detailed engine build and we're gonna measure the clearances and we're gonna measure everything perfectly. Uh, just like Michael did on his D series uh, not too long ago because yeah, but a lot of the times with Hondas, I've said this in the past too, is um, if the crankshaft has not spun a bearing and it is not dirty or you know gummed up or whatever, um, and it, you know it's, it's in a good shape crankshaft, as long as you clean it off good or get it polished, um, and you run standard size bearings, at least on a B series or a single cam, they're 95% of the time it's gonna be all right, but uh, you may run into issues without measuring clearances and stuff if you're running like, say, 2000 RPM over the factory rev limiter. <laughs> um, that's, that's like the big thing with Michael. I think he, he had spun bearing issues and stuff because with his engine, the factory rev limiter is 7,000 RPM. We were spinning this motor like 8,500 or 8,800 or something crazy like that. And that's when he spun his bearing because we didn't measure the clearances and we didn't actually put like a racing bearing in it. It had a really cheap bearing and it had, um, you know, just stock size clearances. But like I said, when you guys are running, you know, 1,000, 2,000 RPM over the factory rev limiter, then you really want to kind of, you know, measure your clearances a little bit more. But with this thing, we're gonna be spinning, you know, the factory rev limiter on a B-series on a lot of them are like 8,000 anyways. So uh, yeah, a lot of times the, the, the factory rod bolts on like an LS and stuff, people say they have issues with, but I've never ran stock bottom end stuff. I always put rods and pistons and everything I run if it's a Honda because stock shit just breaks way too damn easy. Like literally with Hondas, I don't even bother with putting stock stuff in them. It does not pay, I don't bother. Even all motor, I thrash on my shit really hard and uh, I don't know, it just ain't worth it to me. I'd rather just put rods and pistons in. They're, they're so damn cheap nowadays. You can buy a set of connecting rods for 200 bucks and a set of pistons for another 100. Bearings are 50, there you go. So anyways guys, I got everything torqued down here in the proper sequence. We did 22 foot pounds and then 56 on all the main bolts. I put, uh, I've actually been using this uh, engine assembly lube from Stay Lube. It's a uh, extreme pressure anti-seize and I've actually been using this on a lot of the engine builds that I've been doing lately because it, it just sticks on the bearing a lot longer than coating it with gear lube or coating it with like, uh, you know, an actual liquid. This is kind of like a grease. Um, I just think it works better and sticks on the bearing a little bit longer. So when you first fire the car up, um, you know, you have uh, something there coating the bearing before it actually fires up. Um, like I said, it just seems good and it, it almost works as like a good grease. So like I take all the bolts out of the main girdle or not the main girdle out of the caps here, the bolts that go into the main caps and I use that same assembly lube on all the threads so we don't get any mixed up torque readings, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, just figured I'd go over some of that stuff with you guys, but, uh, we will be putting in, um, I have a set of rods and pistons here. We're going to be running the same ones that I had. These are reused um, rods and pistons. These are actually uh, Eagle rods from Christian Morrison built. He actually sent these in to me uh, quite a while ago because I spun a bearing on the, because uh, uh, I had an oil pump failure on one of my last motors and I uh, ended up cooking one of the rods. So he sent me in these rods a while ago and they, they're still in really good shape. So I'm gonna throw them in and uh, 
the rings are already gapped for like a boosted setup so i'm just throwing them right in because they were in uh, the other setup but the other setup cracked a sleeve and these will be the fourth time these pistons have been in and out of a b20 and they're still good 120 dollars piston went 1090 in and out of four different motors and yeah they're still good so mint all right guys so we got the uh, b20 vtech Michael's being a moron, like always. Um, surprised I, he actually cleaned. He put his car on the dyno, and I said, "No, you got clean first, Michael." I did clean my section. Not the well, yeah. And then I yeah, had yeah, mm -hmm. no what, uh -huh. bitch? You yeah, you cleaned right here, but nowhere else. Correct. He said you got to clean your area. Proper shop etiquette, and I, right and there. And I said, "I will when the job's done." And you said, "Well, when's the job done?" I said, "When my car's clean." I could throw it in there. Do it. Bet you won't. <laughs> How much? <laughs> no, 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 because you'll make money off. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's Alright guys, so I did get the B20 uh, bottom end all uh, assembled here. Kind of skipped over some of the stuff because, well, I've done a bunch of them on the past and I did a lot better detailed videos if you guys want to go check those out. Uh, but we did get the uh, motor assembled here. I got the pan on, the windage tray, the uh, oil pickup tube I cleaned out, and then uh, the oil pump. I actually been uh, sort of like going through oil pumps lately and not just throwing stock junk back in. Um, I kind of take them all apart and I, you know, clean them out good and then re-grease the gears that are in there. Um, just kind of gives you a little peace of mind when you put everything back together. But uh, yeah, so rear main, pan, everything is on. All this thing needs is a cylinder head now and a timing belt. So I have that cylinder head that I'm going to be putting on. And uh, so I'm going to be going through the cylinder head maybe tomorrow and I'm going to make sure none of the valves leak and all that. And then this thing can go back together. I just brought my head gasket out here as well. So we're going to have a fully assembled long block probably by tomorrow. And then uh, maybe I'll be pulling the engine out of this thing as well. Uh, and it should be ready to uh, get swapped here pretty soon. So we did get another prime pantry box as well. So we got a uh, box over here. We already took it all out and uh, kind of filmed uh, everything. I just noticed that that's sitting there. <laughs> you had it in your video. I know. You said I tried this out. It's not, I know, but the paraphernalia. Oh, no, that's fine. It's for no, tobacco use only. Yeah, it's used for <laughs> tobacco and CBD. So only. showing a bag of CBD nuts that smell just like the real thing. Yeah. And showing them a pipe that's clean and never been used. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah, I know. That's clean and used. And talking about Kratom, which is a Schedule 2 narcotic, is good too. It never got demonetized. I, I know. I I'm know. just saying. Fuck them. Fuck them. So anyways, we did get a uh, new trash bag thanks to Christian. He actually brought out another trash can out here. Uh, woot woot. Woot woot. And I got he brought some Lunchables out here. Some Lunchables. Um, and then a sub uh, subscriber also sent in another Prime Pantry box. The like same guy that sent in the shit tickets actually sent in some more water. So we got another... Uh, what is that, a uh, 12 pack of water? He sent some Propel, uh, six pack there, so that's a gr greatly appreciated. I don't really drink soda, so the, the Propel water and the bottled water is awesome. And then he also sent some Brent juice, so uh, we should be able to get some good tunes out of this stuff. <laughs> did you go toilet paper shit tickets? Yes, I did. <laughs> And this is Brent juice, right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is this the thousand horsepower stuff? Do we put this on the tire before we do a pull? Is that, is that almost hitting the wall four times? Oh, too far. Too far. Like yeah. No, if that uh, Coca-Cola fucking package had two wheels and two or uh, four wheels and tires, then it'd probably go down the drag strip doing 13.3. 13 13.3? 13 I think that's what it did. That thing looks scary fucking going down the track though. And then Ky uh, Kyle fucking hit the prelude. Yeah. Yeah, he was about fucking shitting his pants in fourth gear. How fast did he go? Uh, 11.0 at like 1.44. <laughs> Why? How? It went 2.060 foot. Or he rolled out of the beams. Even if it was 2.060 foot, oh. that car has more than enough power to still do a 10. I know, but it was breaking up and shit. I'm waiting for Honda uh, Vlogs to come out so I can just Yeah, Honda Vlogs is tonight. I think he's skipped the last two weeks, though. Yeah. Should I add in a bunch of this bullshitting fucking no. talking at the end of every video? Yeah. No. no. Bloopers. Bloopers. Yeah, sure. Bloopers at the end of every video. I like so it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, 
We are going to be throwing Michael's car on the dyno. We actually just cleaned the shop up a little bit. So we got the bench cleaned off and we got uh, the floor swept a little bit. I had a bunch of dirt and shit on top of the dyno here from running my truck the other day. So the dyno had some dirt and stuff on there. I didn't want to run the dyno with a lot of that dirt because the dirt can, you know, get in the bearings and stuff like that, which, uh, you know, just kind of not the best idea. So trying to keep the dyno as clean as we can. Uh, it's tough because our parking lot is all dirt and gravel and stuff. So... Uh, it is tough to kind of keep the shop clean, especially when we did all the concrete work. We got a bunch of dust everywhere and whatnot. But Michael got his transmission back in, and we're about to throw it on the dyno. Um, but you guys will have to wait until the next video, and uh, we'll be tuning Michael's uh, Civic and trying to make some jam with it. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Be sure to have a great night and a better tomorrow, and we'll see you later. We should, we should say making jam with it. Though. Why? Because jam, you have to crush it up. What? Yeah. To make jam. You like crush up grapes and shit. Well, crush up so fucking rod bearings. Exactly.